Hi, I'm Abdul Saad, clinical psychologist here at Vital Mind Psychology in Sydney, Australia. My website is vitalmind.com.au. That's where you can find information about my practice, uh, the services I offer, including to international clients, wherever you are in the world. Also, check me out on Facebook. Just search for Vital Mind Psychology. So in today's uh, video, I'm going to be discussing in more detail grandiose narcissism as I flesh out the particular uh, components or parts of the pyramid model uh, that I discussed in last week's video. So in today's video, I'm going to look at um, a grandiose narcissism or overt narcissism, which is the prototype of a narcissism we see in uh, the clinical literature. Uh, that's the sort of narcissism we see in popular culture and also that is the prototype of narcissism that is in the DSM uh, 4 and 5 or the, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual which is the document that's used to guide uh, diagnosis within the mental health community. Um, so I want to look at grandiose narcissism in some more detail <clears throat> this video and in order to do that, I'm going to look at narcissism, this variant of narcissism, across four domains. The relation the grandiose narcissist has to the self, to themselves, the relationship to others, um, the dominant emotions, and aspects of their temperament. Now, in terms of the relationship of the grandiose or overt narcissist. Actually, before I get into that, so this is called grandiose narcissism, overt narcissism. Some researchers have co also caused this, caused, uh, called this oblivious narcissism because this is the narcissistic individual who is oblivious to the effect and impact they have upon others. They, they really lack self-awareness. So the relation to the self uh, for this individual is, again, the exaggerated sense of self-importance, the belief in their brilliance, uh, I hope that this is coming out on the board, exaggerated sense of self-importance, the belief in their brilliance, the belief in their superiority, okay, uh, there is an inf basically an, what's called an ego inflation, an, an inflated sense of self, an inflated relationship and infatuation with the self. And now that's pretty self-explanatory. In terms of their relationship to others, fundamentally uh, an individual with grandiose narcissism relates to other people in a number of um, predictable categories. And there's sort of four categories that I see. They can seek to dominate and exploit individuals. And this comes from a very important feature of grandiose narcissism, that these individuals are intensely competitive, uh, intensely aggressive. They are intensely aware of hierarchies within organizations, within families, within communities, and they seek to ascend hierarchies in the shortest amount of time and with the shortest amount of effort possible. And therefore they seek to dominate to exploit. Uh, they can lie and cheat their way to the top. Number two, they can relate to other people by uh, charming or seducing them to get what they need. In a romantic relationship, the charming and charm or seduce the charming and seduction may be because the narcissist at this level views the other person as an extension of themselves, as an extension of their superior ego. But as soon as that is broken, they can move toward uh, the devaluation and the discard phase when the other individual is no longer of any consequence. Once they've ascended the dominance hierarchy and used the individual who they've dominated, charmed, or a combination of both, then that person is devalued and discarded. And the fourth way that grandiose uh, narcissists relate to individuals is by basically uh, and it's related to de the devaluing and discard, but it's basically to banish the person or to act as if the other person does not exist, to adopt a condescending attitude where the other person is not even acknowledged. And this relationship to others 
is being driven by a psychology which is dominant, dominance focused, which seeks control, which seeks authority, which seeks power. And as I said, if you want to understand how these individuals relate to others, you have to understand their focus of attention is sharply focused upon dominance hierarchies, who's at the top, how they can get to the top in the quickest amount of time possible and with the least effort. Dominant emotions of grandiose narcissists. Uh, we see a number of dominant emotions. There isn't a lot happening in this individual's internal mental life. We have excitement, elation, you know, fun. And this is what makes these people incredibly charming. A lot of people say this is the sort of person that's good to have at, at a party because they're great raconteurs. They have a lot of anecdotes. So excitement, boredom. Um, these are individuals that are incredibly prone to boredom. They don't really inhabit a rich internal mental uh, life. There, there isn't a lot of psychological depth there. They're incredibly prone to boredom. And of course, this, re this relates back to their propensity to, dis to devalue, discard and banish people once they've used them up. So excitement, boredom, of course, anger and rage when sources of narcissistic supply are not being provided when their um, attempts to exploit others perhaps aren't uh, successful, uh, when their entitlement isn't being um, uh, appreciated or when, the demand, when their demands are not being met, certainly anger and rage can be dominant emotions. Uh, so excitement, boredom, anger, rage, um, some jealousy, although this is a key distinction that I'll be pointing out with the uh, covert narcissist, but certainly grandiose narcissists can feel jealousy, can feel envy, but they can very quickly devalue the source of that jealousy or envy and convince themselves that, that you know, they're better, they can do better, and then move on and not dwell on whatever has triggered uh, their jealousy or envy, unless that individual who, who has triggered that has made a point to belittle or to humiliate the narcissistic individual, which is something you definitely do not want to do with these uh, character disturbed individuals. So we can see there isn't a lot of psychological depth there in terms of the experience of their emotional life and emotional world. And the fourth category, which is temperament or their, you know, their, their, their nature, how are they wired? We see a few things. Certainly we see extroversion. So an individual that is uh, who is exhibiting this form of narcissism, grandiose, overt, oblivious, is going to be extroverted. These are typically high energy people. They have what we call low approach avoidance, or we could say high, uh, high approach. So they're not going to avoid approaching people, uh, striking up conversations. They're going to be very in your face. They're assertive. And this is their nature as extroverts, extroverted, high, approach or low approach avoidance. Uh, they are by nature uh, more impulsive. They take risks, right? And typically an individual that's afflicted with grandiose narcissism at the personality disordered level is gonna be low in what we call conscientiousness. They're not really gonna feel the need to work extra hard to ascend a particular dominance hierarchy. They're gonna find the shortest way. They will use exploitation, dominance, seduction, charm to get their way to the top and ensure that they look good while doing, the, while doing it. So I hope that in this video, I'll just move out of the way so you can see all four uh, segments. I hope in this video, I've given you a more of a three-dimensional view of what is happening for an individual with grandiose narcissism in these four important areas of relation to self uh, or the intrapersonal relationship, relation to others or the interpersonal relationship, the dominant emotions which guide their internal mental life and their behaviors and their basic wiring of this individual. Now, what I'm gonna, going to be doing in the next, in next week's video, God willing, is something that is very rarely done um, in what I've seen in, in terms of what's out there with narcissism is I'm going to be going through the three levels of grandiose narcissism because I'm we, we often talk about it at the level of the 
personality disorder or the character pathology. But of course, grandiose narcissism occurs on a spectrum. And if you tune in next week, I will be revealing three distinct levels at which this narcissism operates, which is going to assist you to understand if there are or if there is an individual in your life causing you problems in this area, where perhaps do they fit along a spectrum or continuum from least pathological to most pathological. Once again, don't forget to subscribe. Please press like on the video if you feel it's of value so other people can also find the video, share the video with family and friends. And I hope uh, to see you next week with a new installment on the three levels of grandiose narcissism. After that, I'm gonna be doing the same thing for uh, covert narcissism, looking at it through these four, in these four domains, and also revealing the three levels of covert narcissism. So stick around for that, subscribe, press the bell icon. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, reading and replying to as much comments as I can on this particular video. So leave your comments. And again, if I can assist you, uh, if you're an international client, wherever you are in the world, get, into my, get onto my website, vitalmind.com.au, click on the personalized coaching, online coaching tab, and uh, send us a message and we'll take it from there. Okay, take care, all the best, bye-bye.